Hey everyone, and thank you so much for clicking on this video. My name is Justin, and I haven't done one of these in a while, but the Leafs are now at, believe it or not, the halfway point of the regular season already, 41 games in. So I wanted to just hop on here to discuss what have we seen so far, but more importantly, what can we expect from this team, especially at the deadline? What do we need? It's really difficult to kind of figure that out right now, but we'll hop into that here shortly. So first off, expectations leading into this season, they were kind of up in the air because the Leafs had a really successful playoff run against Tampa. Even though they lost in the first round, I know they still need to win a playoff series, but they brought Tampa to seven games I thought were the best team in that series. And we're coming into the season with a positive attitude, with a lot of optimism. And then there's also that conversation about, well, we've got two brand new goalies. Neither of them have a significant track record of having success recently. So what can we expect there? We've had some losses on the forward group. We're relying a lot on some young defensemen hopping in. So what are the expectations for this year? And in my opinion, everything has been passing in flying colors. I know that early in the season, I had a number of rants along with the rest of Leafs Nation regarding their terrible, terrible start. And again, that wasn't the results. It was the process. They were not playing good hockey. They looked like they had no bright side whatsoever. They just couldn't string anything together. But since then, I mean, they've gone on an absolute heater. They've had ups, they've had downs, but they sit second in the entire NHL, technically third if you put in points percentage, points per game, uh, but they're second in the division behind the Boston Bruins. I am convinced that Boston will start to regress in the second half of this year, just because it's got to happen, right? Probabilities, they're bound to go on some sort of losing streak, even if that's only three or four games that might create somewhat of a window for the Leafs to maybe start pushing the top of the division. But all in all, sitting in a great spot, positioned to have home ice advantage, once again, positioned to play probably the Tampa Bay Lightning, which really, really sucks. But again, had encouraging results last year. And if they continue to play like they've played at stretches of this season defensively, how they've played in this season, I think they've got a really, really good chance of knocking off the Tampa Bay Lightning. But again, that's a conversation down the road. What is a conversation today is me trying to figure out what does this team need? Because they're not perfect, right? They're they're a team that's got some flaws and you're always looking to add at a deadline. No matter who you are, as long as you're a contender, you should be looking to add. And the Toronto Maple Leafs are actually in a unique position that they haven't been in for the last few years. They've got the room and the space and the ability to make a pretty significant ad at the deadline. In the last couple of years, it's been, you know, looking at someone that's just gonna be a depth piece, maybe fit a certain role at a very cheap price because they haven't had any cap space. And while they are at the cap, they've had enough injuries and long-term injury reserve, and especially the likes of Jake Muzzin, who's looking like he's not going to return for the remainder of the season. That opens up a lot of flexibility and the Leafs have assets in young prospects and picks that I'm sure they are looking to move. But the question is, what are they looking for? Because as we've discussed, the Leafs have been very, very sound, very sound defensively, especially with a number of players that aren't even getting like every single night. They're not in the lineup that could be on an NHL roster. So we need to figure out what kind of moves are we looking to make? What is the biggest area that we need to address considering the fact that the Leafs had just been playing very, very well? Well, in my opinion, I've been beating this drum for a number of years now, and I will continue to do so throughout this season. The Leafs need forward help more than anything. I know the conversation right now is about the goalies. Let me address that quickly first. The goalie situation leading into this season, people thought Kyle Dubas was going to lose his job over those decisions. I supported them. I didn't think that they were going to be this good, but I supported the decision because while well, you're looking at a gamble either way between Jack Campbell, re-signing him, or going after someone like an RFA, Ilya Simsonov, or uh, soon-to-be UFA, Matt Murray, who you also got additional assets in return for that trade. So I defended those moves. And everybody was thinking, okay, well, if the Leafs get 9-10 save percentage for the entire season, they are up far and away in a better position than they were last year because the goaltending they got from Mrazek and Campbell last year was not good. 
not good at all. People seem to be hyping it up in their mind because Jack Campbell's a lovable guy, but it was not good. And so they start off the season unbelievably well. Both of them had injuries, yes, but both of them have played to an incredible standard. Ilya Samsonov was leading the league in save percentage and goals against average at a point. And Matt Murray was in the top five in both those regards as well. Now, lately, they both regressed a little bit. Both are now coming off of a big, important win, each of them, over this weekend. But all of a sudden, it's now this conversation again that the Leafs need goaltending help. Guys, we got to settle down. If you're thinking about over an entire season, 9-10, 9-15 save percentage, which we are absolutely on track to hit, there's going to be ups, there's going to be downs. When the Leafs started this season with 9-50, 9-30 save percentage, that's not sustainable. We have to at least consider the fact that they are going to regress at some point. Now, we can't have an acceptable 800 save percentage throughout the year, but that's not what we're getting. We had a small stint of just a few games of lackluster goaltending. It's not an issue. It's just the probabilities are playing out. You have highs, you have lows. All you need is in the playoffs, you need your goalies to be able to give you 915 save percentage throughout those seven games if it makes it that long in order to win a series. And I think either of these goalies, no matter who you put in the net, is fully capable and will do that. Exactly. They will put up at least a 915 in this in the in the playoffs. So it's not an area of concern for me. It shouldn't be for you, in my opinion. I think we've seen enough of a sample size here to know that both goaltenders are strong enough that we can have faith that they are going to give us better goaltending than Jack Campbell at the very least. So let's calm down. We don't need to go and get a goalie. We don't need goalie insurance. Eric Schalgren has already proven that if he needs to step in, he can. It's not the perfect solution, obviously, but no team in the NHL wants their third goalie playing any games, let alone playoff games. So we don't need goaltender insurance. We've got two capable guys already. So again, addressing the point before I got on a tangent there, the Leafs need forward help. They need scoring help. And at the beginning of the year, I was making the note that the Leafs had absolutely no scoring depth like whatsoever. The top four guys were producing all of their goals. And since then, we've had a very optimistic and encouraging enhancement in our depth scoring. Now, even though we've lost someone like Nick Robertson, who is unfortunately injured once again, and I don't know what the situation will be when he comes back, but we have had Guys deep in the lineup really stepping up. I mean, Callie Yarncroak has now been placed on that second line, which is where I thought that we really, really needed to find a replacement. And he's fitting very well. He's producing goals, and he's getting on the score sheet, and he's not a liability whatsoever. And most importantly, he's not slowing either of Tavares or Marner down, which is ultimately what you need. You can't have someone there that's just not going to allow the other two to do what they need to do. Callie Yarncroak has been pleasantly good in that role. Now, in my opinion, he's not the long-term solution. I would like an even better, more appropriate scoring winger to play with those two. I think it's just exactly what this Leafs team needs. But in the interim, he's done a good job. I'm just thinking, if you end up moving him to the third line with someone like, I don't know, Camp and Engvall, I know they've already played together. I know he didn't have the best fit there, but I just, I think that he's in a better position right now to succeed in that role. I think that would be a very strong line. And I mean, talking about center death, center is, we've we've got really good options at center this year so far. Tavares and Matthews, obviously the one-two punch is lethal as it is. But then David Kampf is sneaky underrated on this team. And even more so, Pontus Holmberg is, I think, the perfect fourth line center. Sheldon Keefe can't help but rave about this guy every single time he talks about him. He's now been putting the puck in the net a little bit more frequently. He's very cheap, obviously. He's very responsible. He's the perfect guy for a fourth line role. So center depth, I don't think we have any issues there. I don't think we need to go and get anybody. It's more the wingers. And now talking about the defensemen, what do we do there? Because for the first time in forever, A, the Leafs are a very, very good defensive team. But B, they've got more options that they can fit in any given night. I mean, they can only dress six defensemen. I guess they could go seven defensemen, but no point for that. But they've got at least seven or eight guys that could be in an NHL roster every single night. And the big conversation right now is Connor Timmins. He just scored his first NHL goal. I think I heard the stat. He has 10 points in 12 games with the Toronto Maple Leafs. That is absurd 
for a defenseman. And this is a guy that it's not like it's coming out of nowhere. He was very good for Team Canada in the World Juniors. He was a first-round draft pick. He just got hit with some bad injuries on the first few teams that he played with and is finally staying healthy, getting an opportunity on a strong team, a team that relies on puck-moving defensemen just like Connor Timmins, and he's flourishing in that role. But where do you fit him in this roster? Because you've already got Timothy Lagren, you've already got uh, TJ Brody, and surprising to most people, but Justin Hall has been playing very, very good hockey recently. Do you take him out? I know people are calling for it, but you also have to keep in mind, what kind of role are we looking to have in the lineup? I mean, Justin Hall is a very good penalty killer, if not one of the best on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Is that the role that Connor Timmins can play? Not exactly. He's more of an offensive threat. He's a puck-moving defenseman, someone that can give you better breakouts, someone that can control the puck and even put up some points as we've seen so far. So replacing Justin Hall with Connor Timmins doesn't make sense because you're now removing someone that's defensively responsible and someone that's very good on the penalty kill for someone that's a little bit more offensive-minded. And if the Leafs are trying to build this identity of being a defensive team, that's just not the right move. It's not the appropriate move to make because you're sacrificing defense for additional offense. And that's not what this team needs. Honestly, in the playoffs, they need to be able to really shut down teams and they need to obviously have a scoring threat more so than they've had in the past. But that doesn't need to come from the defensive end. It needs to come from the forwards. So I don't think that moves make sense. So with all of that said, what can the Leafs do at the deadline? And what I've been thinking recently is because they have so many options on the defensive end, do we possibly see the Leafs capitalizing on Connor Timmins having so much success early on and not being a full-time defenseman on this team and having the experience of his injury issues and taking that player that you traded, who was it, Curtis Douglas, someone that was a career AHLer, in exchange for Connor Timmins, and now you flip Connor Timmins, a right-handed defenseman that's almost a point per game, producing on the second place team in the NHL, who needs a full-time role in the NHL, do you flip him for someone at the deadline? And that wouldn't be the big piece that you go after, but he could either be a part of a bigger deal that brings a bigger piece to Toronto, or you could even move him for a draft pick, which in my mind, I'm thinking Connor Timmins is worth probably at least a second round pick. You got to think about how rare right-handed defensemen are in the NHL, puck moving, scoring right-handed defensemen. That's what Connor Timmins can bring to your lineup. I know I'm probably overhyping him a little bit, but he's had a lot of success in Toronto. I just don't know if he's going to get the full-time role in Toronto that he deserves and could get on any other NHL team. So could you move him for a second round pick that you then flip as part of a deal for a bigger piece? And in my opinion, that bigger piece of all the people that have been rumored to Toronto, it's got to be Timo Meyer. That is my guy that I'm focusing on. Not only does he perfectly, to a T, fit exactly what this Toronto team needs, a left, winging, a left wing scorer. Like, he's a pure sniper. He can put the puck in the net. He's got playoff success doing exactly that. Not only all of that, but he's a restricted free agent, which is extremely, extremely valuable. Not because the Leafs can afford to sign him, because his qualifying offer is $10 million, and you're not giving Timo Meyer that kind of money unless you're literally conceding getting rid of William Nylander, which I would not be a fan of. But you can then trade his rights to a team at the deadline because he's a restricted free agent. He can't just walk. You have to be able to move his rights and you will get strong assets in return. So whatever you pay at the deadline, you would know that you're recouping some of that. I don't think he's even overly expensive given the fact that this trade deadline should have a number of quality pieces on the block. You got Vladimir Tarasenko and Ryan O'Reilly, both on St. Louis. You got Jonathan Taze and Patrick Kane, both on Chicago. You've got just a number of very quality forwards that there's only so many teams that are in the buying category right now that draws the price down. So Timo Meyer might be the most expensive because his RFA status, but he's bound to recoup some assets back at the deadline whenever you do make that deal. At the end of the day, the Leafs are in a very interesting position because I could not even 
fully identify what the Leafs need at this point, but I do know that they do need to make some sort of move to strengthen the team, at least get some depth, some reinsurance uh, leading into the playoffs here. But it's been very successful so far, and I'm excited to see what Kyle Dubas has up his sleeve because he surely has been cooking something. And we're getting close to the trade deadline. I believe that's in middle of March, and we're already coming close to the middle of January. So only a couple months to really identify what this team needs and go after and make the right deal. The Leafs have the flexibility and the ability to make that move. So I'm excited to see what exactly it is. And I am intrigued on that idea of maybe flipping someone like Connor Timmins because of the success that he's had, because of the low cost that it cost us, but the high return that he could bring. So that's very good asset management, if you ask me. But at the end of the day, I have no idea. What do you think? Let me know. How do you think this team has done so far? And what do you think is the glaring issue that we need to address? Maybe there isn't a glaring issue, but what do you think we could probably strengthen going into the playoffs and the trade deadline? I'm excited to see your thoughts and I'm excited to see what the rest of this season has in store. I'll see you in the next one.